Maranatha Christian Church is present in nations over all over the continents of the world. We have churches in the three Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, connected by the same doctrine, by the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brothers from all over the world participate in one service in the same body and the same spirit through the system of satellite transmission. All of the members of the Maranatha Christian Church live a moment of complete fellowship just like the Jewish people when they left Egypt and the disciples, the way they lived with God before his death on Calvary. People from all parts of the world have been reached by this eternal gospel and by the message of the soon return of the Lord. We greet the church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are transmitting this Sunday school from the Manai, from Dominguez Martins, in the state of Espiritu Santo. And this is the actually the finale of a seminar of youth that we had yesterday. And we are ending it this morning. Many experiences have been lived here. And pretty soon, the all of the brethren can also share all of the teachings that we have given here. On our channels of YouTube, we have more. We had more than sixty thousand views of all of these classes and the seminar that we have been transmitting. And the seminar has been transmitted in the language of Portuguese, but also in Spanish and Russian and English. Brethren from parts of all over the world have participated in the seminar, and they have sent in multiple photographs and information. But we are going to highlight a few of the places that they've sent in pictures in relation to yesterday, yesterday's seminar that they have watched. But before that, we're going to talk about some seminars that happened in Africa. And the brethren there in this city in Africa, they are participating with us in this Sunday school in the city of Nampula of Africa. And in Spain, they also participated in the seminar with us. They watched it. Cities like Madrid, Granolers. There were also baptisms in the city of Peabody, Massachusetts. We also had a completion of the of the project of teaching that we have been we have been giving in the city of Lisboa in Portugal. There were many people that graduated from this program. We also had a encounter in Curitiba, in Paraná, 
We also had an event of another graduation from the project of teaching all over cities in Brazil. There was also a visual in Rio de Janeiro. There was also a consecration of the church in Minas Gerais, in Belo Horizonte. There were also many evangelizations in Victoria. Also in Rio de Janeiro, also in Manaus, and in different cities in Espírito Santo, and in Linhares in Espírito Santo as well. There are also a lot of baptisms in Bahia, Salvador, in Natal, in Rio Grande do Norte, in Cariacica, in Espírito Santo and in Vitória, also in Espírito Santo. Very well, brothers. Brethren, right now we're going to start our topic of the Sunday School. We also want to remind the churches that the children, intermediates, and adolescents can, or just the children, can be released to go to their classes and send a deacon to, to pray with them in this moment as well. Now we are going to transmit to the brethren information having to do with our Sunday School of this morning that is located in the book of Lucas chapter 12 verse 16 to 20. So we're going to be reading in Lucas. The brethren can keep their, their Bibles open to this. Lucas, Luke 12, 16. Brethren, a peace of the Lord Jesus in first place. The topic that we are giving for this Sunday school was previously given via WhatsApp to all of the pastors so that they could they could be learning more about the topic and be well informed before we give this this Sunday school so that they can be prepared with all of the information so they could add to the, the topic if necessary. Something that we've always do, I'll be always do as well, is a, a study we talk about the text and then we talk about the context the text is what we what we use to give the basic message and the context is everything that involves the text which is all the extra things that you might need to know to understand the message all the things surrounding the message the central message in chapter 14 of Matthew the brethren can observe that there are various subjects that that Jesus mentioned of that time so simply the text that we will be reading is the text that's focused on the principal subject. But we have to also pay attention to the context, everything else that is surrounding what we are going to be talking about. So the historic aspect of it. And we're also going to be looking at the prophetic the revelation behind all of the text. So we see in chapter 12 of Luke, we're going to find here some subtitles that are here. So what did Jesus want to say here? He wanted to say that this, this moment, 
the brethren will, will find one word in the text that we are going to be giving today that is the prophetic direction for this time and there is one word that's going to designate this in the text and we're going to find what word that it is that tells us that describes the time we are living the time of soon so in this text what we're going to find first is the worry the concerns of the time we are living Jesus says that everyone's going to be living in fear the church which is the center of everything the concern is that the world the world today is a world full of people who are fearful men are, are scared and this fear fear as in being scared is contrasting people inside church we have to be different from them we can't be scared they're scared of sin they're scared of of offending people they're scared of disciplining of others so this is the time it's the the fear of man and this is the, the center of this parable that we are going to be reading this is the main aspect now another subtitle we're going to see the solicitude for life we see a man who lives completely for his life here on earth while the church lives for another purpose we have to understand that the worries of this life is not essential for our life in eternity. We can't be worrying here on earth. The man in this parable, his, his mind was completely focused on this life on earth. So, the more rich he thought that more riches he had, the more value he had to God. And this was the mentality of the of Jewish, because Jewish teachings taught this. They taught that everything, that things that mattered were things here on the on earth. They didn't understand that Jesus was going to be their, their, the prince of, their prince and the, the chosen one. But Jesus himself says that my kingdom is not going to be on this earth. The kingdom is going to be in heaven. Let's make a quick observation that this idea changed the life of Christianity. When Jesus spoke in a, of the Jewish and the Israelites and the Judaism, this mentality kind of infiltrated Christianity. The church lived their whole lives thinking of, of money, of resources of this world. And this started passing down and passing on. And that's what man is interested in. But and then we have to see that the Lord says that this isn't the life. This isn't this isn't what your life is meant for. Your life is here so that you guys could go to to eternity you cannot focus on the things of this world of the treasures 
when there was the the pouring out of the Holy Spirit in the 18th century the temples they were all constructions that were monumental if anyone knows a little bit about history and follow these centuries after the reformation we have nothing against the reformation of the catholic church but we're going to find, for example, in the Protestant religions, in the Anglican churches, whoever saw, whoever sees their services in the Anglican churches, we have nothing against the kings in, in England or the government in England, but we are sh showing that the Protestants thought in the same way. They thought, let's make a temple that's so rich and so so rich looking that n the poor people wouldn't even want to go into them. And the people that would go into them, they were very important people and they would come in dressed and come in with uniforms. So they thought that the manifestation of, of Jesus would be in a very pretty temple, in the, the beauty of the temple. And the cathedrals in Europe all mirrored this, this mentality. These were examples of their mentality of I'm going to do this because Jesus needs to be presented in a, in a very glorious place. But riches, accumulated riches and demonstration of, of luxury is what persisted throughout all of this, all of Christianity. And they thought, I am from God because I'm rich. I'm from God because I've had, I have all this luxury. Like I have a, one car here, but I have 10 more in my garage. I'm going to go to heaven because I have a, a store that brings in a lot of money for me. It's this idea that they had. So when Jesus comes into the parable, we're going to show this later on. We have a lot to speak about in this in this topic but this is what happened when the when the Holy Spirit was poured out they were, there was no need for these temples the teaching was so sophisticated and the theologians thought they, they knew so much about how, what God should do, what God is. Man was determining what God had to do. So what happened was the Holy Spirit, he, when he was poured out upon the world in the Pentecost, they previously, all of these people who were converted in this time, they were previously part of this this Christianity and the mentality that it was only in riches and in glory. But the Holy Spirit, when it poured out upon these people, the Holy Spirit poured out in in the poor places, in the places of poverty, in the middle of the street. And the people in the middle of the streets, they were the ones who who confessed to God and rendered their lives to God because the Holy Spirit didn't have places in these beautiful cathedrals and these rich um, temples. The Holy Spirit went to those who were humble. But this is the Christianity. 
the new Christianity. It's not what the Jewish people thought. We're not saying that they are wrong because of this. We're just saying that the error is with man. Error is in the, the Christianity that adopted these ideas. The, the life of man isn't, has, doesn't have to do with the values and the riches that we acquire in this world. There is not one parable that doesn't show that, that Jesus criticized religion. When when Jesus goes to tell the disciples in a in a conversation, he speaks of religion. And then later on, he makes the connection to the church of the prophecy. He talks to the disciples, but he also prophesizes for the church in the future. And we're going to transfer to Pastor Jilson, who's going to give us the, the questions, and we're going to speak about the answers. We have a short time, and we have to make sure we don't go over this time. Here's Jusung. He looks so he looks so good with his nice tie. He was scared that Pastor Alexandre was going to take his place. Amen, brethren. Now that we are into this topic, we're going to have an idea of the context of the topic of the parable. Now that we have a little bit of context, we're going to go into the questions. And the question is, reading the text of Luke 12, 16 to 21, identify in the parable of the rich man the motives of the foolish rich man, the reasons for his foolishness. So let's identify the reason for his foolishness in Luke 12, 16 and 21. Whoever finds it first, raise their hands and, and say that you found the first one. We're going to be discussing. So which verse speaks about the reasons for his foolishness. Os irmãos de lá falarem para cá para a gente está aqui porque nós aprendemos também. Estamos aprendendo. We're all learning. We're all learning together. And there's a lot of very interesting things in this, in this chapter. So, in Luke, in Luke 19, the text that we that we found that had the answer was Luke 12:19 that says. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid, laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. This is what the soul thinks it needs. It has to have all these things on, the, on earth, all these earthly treasures. We don't want to be poor. We don't want to be hungry. It's not this. We want our soul yearns for the things of the of earth. But what we actually need is spiritual earnings. We have to give value to serving to the Lord, being humble. 
our people that we have here, our capability. We had so many servants here in the seminar. We have so many people who are integrated. And we are all giving value to the things of the Lord. But these people who, whose soul yearns for the things of the world, they are not valuing the work of the Lord in their lives. And the, our soul is one thing. The man is paying attention to what religion is teaching them, but it's not this that we have to pay attention to. We can't give in to what our soul thinks it needs, which is the many goods on the land. Give your name and your pastor. So in chapter 12 of Lucas, in verse, in verse 18, so he said, I will do this, I will put down my barns and goods greater, there will be my crops and goods. What is the biggest reason for all of this talk for this crazy man? And this answer that was given by the pastor here is interesting because he makes a question for himself and in this is the answer. He's not worried about what God has for him. He only cares about what he wants for himself. In the other churches, Science and faith. In verse 21, verse 21 says, So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. He, here, he's confusing the material with a spiritual. Our soul doesn't drink nor does it eat. This is the problem, right? Because he who is against the project of the Lord wants the, the goods and the riches of the earth. In, verse, in chapter 12, verse 9, says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. This is the answer that was given for question number one. And I'm sure this, the brethren in the churches have also found this answer. The second question is make an association, a connection from the parable of the rich man of Luke 12, 16, 21 with the text in Revelation 3, 17 with the church in today for our church in today's day. Make an association or a connection for these two texts. Revelation 3.17 says, Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So, these people who have money, who have clothing, riches of this world, are they happy? Do they have eternal life? Yes or no? When 
when the parable says in regards of the foolish man it's talking about the the end the time of soon that we are living but we're going to leave we can't speak against Israel and Jewish if we're just going to be living the way just like them and the text says Jesus says that they're foolish you don't know that you're miserable naked, poor and blind they're miserable, poor, blind and naked my brethren what is of interest to us is the prophetic the revelation where is the problem for us, for the church in relation to today's day and age is in that time the, the man who was rich he changes to the church in today's day what is important in this connection is the prophecy the prophetic they're living a church in where the ministry is gone these are the, the five ministry it's the the doctor, the evangelist, these five ministries of the church, that's what this, these um, descriptions represent, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. It's these five different ministries of the church that are forgotten about because they're not giving value. Pastor Clinton, I have a, just a small comment for this part of Revelation 3.17. When they're making the co comparison for these two texts, there's the expression, I am rich. I have become wealthy and need of nothing. But in the part of the... We are. This is, this is a, a picture of what we are living today, the connection of today. And he says that the soul has many goods for many years, but the Lord has not called us for a project for many years. So in, in Luke, when it says that I have goods that will last many years, the Lord doesn't want you to have goods for many years. He wants you goods that will last you right now, that you will use right now, that will bring you to eternity right now. Not in many years, not for many years. So what is the prophetic meaning of the expression this night? This night, what is the prophetic meaning for the, the words this night in Luke 12, 20? And a sight evidence that it connects to the moment that we are living today. When Jesus Jesus says in the verse, he says he calls them fool, and that's not allowed. We can't do that today in church. But Jesus did this. He called them a fool. Foolish is there are many people feel foolish people everywhere. <laughs> Everyone's a little foolish, right? But when Jesus says this in the verse, it's unfortunately, unfortunately someone who's 
Very far off. Someone who's lost. When we find someone who who's not in the presence, we, we they're in the dark. They're in a corner. They're in they're in a dark place. They don't have this light. So this night in the verse represents that it's a world right now is very dark they're full of foolish people who don't have the light it's time of the sin time of darkness they don't have the light because Jesus is the light and they don't have Jesus <laughs> the people they live scared of the night time because they they walk during the night time they are not sleeping they're just walking around aimlessly they are foolish they're being they're acting like fools they're not resting in Jesus instead of resting during the night they are walking around and they are awake during this time of sin and pastors tonight they can preach about what is it that they're so worried and they're so bothered about because the man who are these men who are walking around in the night time these foolish people they are bothered by something so the pastors can bring a message to what these things that they can be bothered about are but yeah this night refers to foolish people they walk around in the night they are the people of the world so this time of night that is referred to in verse 20 is the time of soon that we are living the time of soon that we are living refers to this this night that is referred to in the text the suggestions for message there's so many suggestions that we could give but the Lord has given the verse has showed the verse Luke chapter 12 verse 20 but God said to him fool this night your soul will be required of you then whose will those things be which you have provided in the in the verse it says that the the fool is of that time but it also refers to today's time so we're going to be ending the service in this moment everyone can be standing so we can pray the pastors and the churches can be giving their own orientations and ending the services Lord Jesus we, we thank you Lord for the Sunday school for the, for the work that has given us such that has sustained us and has given us so much wealth and things we can learn from. We pray for the children, Lord, that have also meditated upon your word this morning. And we pray for the grace of the Lord, the love of God, and the consolations of the Holy Spirit may be with us now and forever. Amen.
if the brethren want to make any commentaries, want to add anything about anything that we have spoken this morning in the Sunday school, the verses that were given to us, it's interesting actually because in the verse 19 says, you have many goods laid up for many years. Man, we think we think we're not going to die. They think they're not going to die, die right now. They think they're going to die in 10, 20, 30 years. And what I have is sufficient to last me throughout this whole time. I deposited some money. I'm saving money. I have a savings account. I have insurance. I have a good retirement fund saved so I can just rest and drink and eat and be merry but the Lord here says that while you think that you are living many years the Lord says this night your soul is going to be taken so while man is thinking that they're going to live for 30 years God is saying you're going to die today you're going to be taken today your soul will be required of you this night so if I die today, what have I prepared? What, what, benef- what goods have I acquired if I die today? What will I have for eternity? Nothing, because they're preparing for years. If naked you came from the womb of your mother, naked you will return. You will die. And it's interesting because they say, ease, drink, and be merry. When, when man gets, gets lazy, they put their guard down, they, they rest, it's in that very moment that the, their lives will be, they will be taken from them. So here is an alert from the Lord to be, to make their, to have their waist, to be girded. Their waists have to be girded and their lamps have to be turned on. It's interesting because the the religions of this world they preach about the theology of of this world, of the riches and the things of the wealth of this world. These people who are acquiring this wealth, these people who only care about things of the world, they are fools. They are they're not they don't have salvation. The disciples of the world they were, they were all poor. They weren't rich. They were fishermen. Jesus was the poorest one of all. He, he was born in, in the middle of a, in the middle of a barn, in, in poverty. The Son of Man didn't even have somewhere to put his head. When Jesus died, he didn't have a tomb to go to. He didn't have somewhere where he can rest peacefully. He was very poor. It's the benefactors. Jesus didn't have anything. But the tomb where they where they're speaking of the bigger the temple the more they, they think that the bigger the church the more the Holy Spirit will inhabit their churches that's why today we have these mega churches we have these huge temples but that's not what it is that's not what the Holy Spirit is looking for that's why the rich man he was called crazy he was called foolish because Sometimes man just wants to live many years, but that's not what Jesus wants for us. Jesus wants the eternity for us. He wants us to live for today. In verse 20, verse 20 says, 
what you have prepared, who will it be for? Very well. So, who have you prepared your goods for? Like, for example, my... What is my spiritual inheritance that I'm going to give to my children or to my nep nieces and nephews? So, I can't just give them goods from this world. I have to give them what is of actual importance, which is the teachings of eternity, which is the teachings of the Lord. In, in another parable, the, the father gave their son, he was worried about giving their son, his son, goods of this world, materialistic goods, but that's not what the Lord wants us to give. That's not the inheritance that we should be giving our children. We should be giving them things of substance, spiritual, spiritual inheritance. The children will sing a song now. Let's all be standing. During the ministry of Jesus, there were two pers personalities that I, I really liked, which was Bar Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, because he says, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. And the other was the, the rubber that was next to Jesus at cross, at cross of Calvary. He, he gave his life to the Lord. He asked for mercy. We have to be more like them. We have to ask for mercy to the Lord because they were the ones, they said, I did something wrong, I sinned, and I deserve to die. But Jesus, have mercy upon my life. Have mercy on me. I want to have a place in heaven. And Jesus, with his infinite mercy forgave them and the pastor already he already gave the already ended so now we're just going to glorify the Lord we glorify your name Lord for your grace your love your infinite mercy upon our lives for your project for your mercy that has 
every single day, Lord, sustained our lives in your presence. We glorify you, Lord, because you have reserved a spot for us in eternity, Lord, and that you are the and you are the king and you are the king of glory, Lord. Keep giving us experiences, Lord, opening our eyes, Lord, and opening our hearts so that we can understand your word. Bless the service of tonight, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the peace of the Lord Jesus to all. There will be a, a small meeting with the group.